we were probably a quasar. Probably every big galaxy was a quasar when it was young. Stars are literally the brightest objects in the universe. They're so intense they can outshine an entire galaxy. If you thought supernovas were the brightest objects in the universe, think again. Quasars are not talked about as much, but they have baffled astronomers for decades, piqued our curiosity, and brought us closer to understanding what happened in the early days of our universe. But what exactly makes quasars so scary? Enough to be called the cosmic monsters of the universe. Let's jump in and find out. Quasars might not be stars, but they are the brightest objects in our universe and ones that nobody expected to find. The 1900s was a time of revolution. Big things were happening across the globe and timeless discoveries were made. In astronomy, things were happening too. We were pushing the boundaries of our knowledge and coming up with new theories to explain how the universe came to be. But in the 1960s, there was a discovery that shook the science world to its core, the discovery of quasars. However, it was a long time coming. The first time astronomers got a hint that there was something out there was in the 1950s, when radio astronomers picked up on several odd objects. The strangest part was these objects emitted strong radio signals, like stars, but didn't look like them. They were called quasi-stellar radio sources and featured in the third Cambridge catalogue of radio sources that came out in 1959. It was hard not to believe that these bright objects weren't stars. They shared some similarities and there was nothing else we knew at the time that could shine that bright. Photographs taken of its optical spectra also presented a challenge. It showed emission lines at wavelengths that were impossible to see in other celestial bodies already discovered. But fast forward a few years later and there was finally a clue to point to the existence of something different. Dutch-American astronomer Martin Schmidt targeted the brightest object called 3C273 with the Hale telescope the largest telescope in the world at the time. He recognized that the odd emission lines were coming from hydrogen atoms and that it shifted to the red portion of the spectrum. This meant that object 3, C273, wasn't anywhere in our Milky Way and using Hubble's law, the object was at least 2 billion light years away and moving away from Earth at nearly 16% the speed of light. No star behaved this way. To make sense of what he had just discovered, Schmidt looked at another quasi-stellar radio source, 3C48, and it had an even higher redshift and was so far away from 3C273. Once and for all, this confirmed that those objects were indeed not stars. So it was time for a new name. Calling it quasi-stellar radio source was too long, so it was shortened to Quasar, and the name stuck. It's been a little over 60 years since astronomers discovered quasars. Since then, more than a million quasars have been discovered, classified, and studied. What we found out about them only leaves us more curious. Whatever quasars are, the only thing scientists were sure of at the time was that they were bright. But they didn't expect it to be this bright. The light from the brightest quasar, 3C273, is two trillion times brighter than the light from the sun. Imagine if this quasar was at the far end of our solar system, or even a couple thousand miles away from our solar system in general. Its light would dry up our ocean in seconds and burn everything to the ground. Thankfully, the closest quasar to us is billions of light years away. Quasars radiate more light than entire galaxies. Even a supernova that can outshine an entire galaxy for weeks is nothing compared to a quasar. A single quasar can outshine 10,000 galaxies for millions of years. However, this discovery quickly brought up another problem. For quasars to be this bright, they needed to have an energy source. Stars like the Sun, for instance, are powered by nuclear fusion, 
This converts less than 1% of the star's mass into energy, but it doesn't come close to the power quasars emit. Its energy source needed to be massive and capable of providing enough raw gravitational energy to support powerful blasts of radiation. Then, scientists had their eureka moment. Since these quasars were emitting radio emissions, was there a slight chance that they were powered by massive black holes? It was an insane idea, an out-of-the-box thinking, but it turns out that they were right. Quasars are black holes bigger than the Sun a billion times over. They are even bigger than Sagittarius A, the black hole in the middle of the Milky Way. But it's not the black holes themselves that emit such powerful radiation. A black hole's gravity is strong enough to tear stars, gas clouds, and just about anything else that ventures too close. Countless tons of material falling into the black hole are compressed as it tries to squeeze through the event horizon. The compression, combined with the friction among atoms, raises the temperature of the gas high enough to emit huge amounts of radiation. And that's how quasars are born. Hey spacers, while you cover your eyes from the brightness of the quasars, make sure to hit subscribe and hit the like button to be notified of new and awesome space content. And now, throw on some shades and onto quasars. Quasars are without a doubt the most powerful engines in the universe, the only thing capable of creating more energy than it is the formation of galaxy clusters. Some quasars even form the core of galaxies. They've been around since two or three billion years after the Big Bang, and light from it travels towards Earth for 10 to 11 billion years. The most distant quasar we've discovered existed when the universe was just 600 to 70 million years old, and it is 13 billion years old. What makes them even more special is how quickly they change in brightness. They can change brightness several times during the course of a week. By watching quasars' light fluctuate, astronomers were able to predict their size and found out that they are actually quite small. The biggest quasar is only a couple of light years in size. For our human eyes, quasars are gigantic, but compared to the size of galaxies, a quasar is very small. Its diameter is no wider than the solar system. Even though it is small, it should not be underestimated. The amount of radiation a quasar releases is enough to have some type of effect on any galaxy. The radiation it releases covers the entire electromagnetic spectrum, from radio waves to X-rays and high-frequency gamma rays. Huge bursts of ionized gas are also released into the galaxy and affect how stars form. On one hand, they push molecular gas clouds together as they expand into the host galaxy and trigger the formation of millions of stars. On the other hand, the gas outflows can slow down star formation by blowing gas away from the interstellar medium. It either heats up the gas, making it too energetic to collapse and form stars, or it expels it from the galaxy, starving new stars of the fuel they need to survive. If it does expel gas away from the galaxy, then it cannot evolve and no star would be able to form there for millions of years or maybe even forever. Despite what we have found so far, we are still barely scratching the surface. Astronomers haven't been able to study the most distant quasars properly, but the presence of the James Webb Telescope is going to change that. The telescope is already observing 25 distant quasars and results are already pouring in. One of these quasars just so happens to have a dark matter halo and anchors a filament of 10 galaxies. Some existed 800 million years after the Big Bang and show the relationship between quasars and their host galaxies. The discovery of quasars 60 years ago and what is left to uncover is changing our understanding of galaxy evolution and the structure of the universe. Now we have to wonder, did the galaxies appear first or did the supermassive black holes form and then galaxies formed around it? Can quasars die out like stars or do they live forever? Even if black holes didn't appear first, is it possible that they existed almost simultaneously? See what I mean? A lot of things to think about. 
Maybe we just need another 60 years to have it all figured out. So, spacers, what do we think of these bright, bright giants in space? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to check out other videos as we continue to explore the depths of the universe. If you're loving our content, please subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new and awesome space videos. Thank you for spacing out with us and see you next video.